Betwixt the raising of the undying emperor and the great planner war that shook the heavens, there was an age of contradiction. Where cannons won kingdoms and muskets kept the peace, a brave few won the hearts of the conquered and the conquerors alike. Of these we speak of the decline of the great kingdoms and cultures under the heel of empire. Of those we speak of gladiators and the untold thousands that aspired to be them. Of this, an age of glory where kings would be slaves and a gladiator would be king. Good afternoon and welcome to Die Dragon Die Presents the Dread and Circus Campaign Episode 5. I gave it the placeholder title of uh, the, the Prince of Dread. Uh, of course, shit can happen during the game and we can change that at the end of the game. I'm joined by my good friend Adam. Uh, the other guys don't know where they are. I think Mark is working today and Ahmed mm, dealing with family or something? Don't know. Uh, but the structure of this campaign is such that we will play if we have at least one player, as we did the other night with Mark and we had a, we had a jolly old time, so we'll do the same I thing with Adam. I am a player! I count as one! <laughs> <laughs> I am important! <laughs> I have now complete control of all the characters in the story! <laughs> okay, Marty, we all commit Sebuku. <laughs> <laughs> we all commit Sudoku. <laughs> we all go in the corner and do Sudoku. <laughs> oh, oh, what a what a great night that would be. We were just chatting with Drakester online about weather. We were having a very Canadian conversation. Like, how's the weather outside, eh? <laughs> uh, all right. So why don't we do a quick recap of what happened in the last couple of games uh, on Dread and Circus. Uh, game log, where do we go? Uh, let us go back to the Young Masters. This was episode two. Uh, because I think we're going to uh, switch focus uh, to focus once again on the Young Masters. Mark so, does not get to get out of the the, the snow uh, the snow dwarf's predicament without peeking yeah, there. The snow he, dwarf's he, predicament. He took some of the crappiest random roles and turned it into a character. Like, there was so much, like like... Vim and Ver with this character, it was it was great. Uh, it was amazing how how you could turn this pile of a pile of random crap and in five minutes come up with a come up with a really really neat concept and character and uh, surprised us all with his role playing. Well, not not that he role plays, it just surprised us with that character. Arson Alex, long time. Hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, <laughs> and then the stream <laughs> seems to and the chat seems to like uh, that particular character. Um, don't get too attached, though. It is gladiatorial combat. He doesn't um, have that many hit points <laughs> or anything of note on his sheet. <laughs> so, the young masters in episode two, the administrators of the Conclave of Crimson Sands, which is the name of a gladiatorial stable, uh, they deal with their drunken masters, like the people who actually own this stable. They discover a great spectacle is planned in the Hippodrome to honor the imp Imperial Prince's birthday and that their entire gladiatorial stable has been signed up for this battle in a risky scheme to pay off the owner's considerable gambling debts. He has bet the farm and the stable, literally, um, on winning this perhaps impossible fight <sighs> to pay off some ridiculous gambling debts on some crazy odds. The three masters set out into the Imperial City to find out what the nature of the spectacle is, and using some charm and disguise spells, uh, they ended up following guards to where they go and drink, uh, and, and charmed a guard and found out that they are going to reenact, and I, I, this is like the level of prep I'm doing for this campaign, we're going to optimize for little prep and still see if we can do a thing. The Battle of, Sa of Sanguine Tears, which was um, a famous battle from long ago where uh, triremes fought triremes and uh, it was like one of the first decisive victories in the use of alchemist fire <laughs> in big dragon torches yeah. against other boats. So um, they suspect that... Uh, and actually, they went and checked out on the outside, and they saw that one of the aqueducts of the Imperial City was being diverted to, to likely flood the arena so that they could have a an aquatic battle for the Just for like the Imperial Water Princes. World, it's really expensive, <laughs> but it will never make its money back and always be kind of disappointing. <laughs> Just like Water World. Aww. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. All right. So uh, they, they figured that out, and I believe that there are now two days before the spectacle. They, they, you, they saw that wooden beams were being brought in to fashion, or like pieces of the ships were kind of like taken apart and put back together. Um, and there's major construction, and the flooding of the Hippodrome has begun. Now, there are other arenas in the Imperial City, three of which are kind of like attached to each other. So you've got uh, the Arena Moors, where most of the classic gladiatorial fighting goes on, kind of like a sand pit with a, with a dome around it. Then you've got the Hippodrome, where mostly it is, it is for like chariot races and horse races and other kinds of races, but for this particular battle, they're, they're apparently flooding it. And then you've got a much more secretive uh, place where the aristocracy go, and it's called the Conjurium. And, well, maybe we'll save the surprise of what the Conjurium is for another time. You did get a hint in last game, episode four, called Bullshit, um, where they, uh, the five slaves traveling along the road of sorrow spot two hanged men. They speak about the nature of freedom and slavery with their wagon driver, Old Whitey. Their caravan makes its way to the mining town of Quatra, named after a nearby holy site of the, the four pillars of the old gods. Amongst the ancient pillars, their metal is tested by a master conjurer, with two possible outcomes, death or receiving the gladiator's brand. Ugg receives a vision while he is amidst the pillars, simultaneously suffering from a seizure. So if it seems a little bit confusing how I just described what happened to these five slaves and we're talking about the masters, is that um, so far in the five episodes, we've sort of concentrated on different areas uh, along what has been called the Road of Sorrow. Uh, which is where slaves are being brought up towards the capital city um, and to, to the delight of the Imperials um, being forced to uh, fight in gladiatorial games. Um, there might be much more going on underneath, uh, as I, I've begun to hint at with some of the encounters and discussions uh, uh, that these slaves had. At some point, the masters will meet the slaves. Um, so I'm kind of setting up, like, this is basically the backstory of how of how all these characters meet. I don't think I like any of these ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it maybe it, <laughs> it might be so. Somehow I doubt it. <laughs> Except that little one with the cute smile. Oh right. So <laughs> so um, they each have a PC, and these are the young masters. These are the people that are trying to like run the gladiatorial stable and make it succeed. Hopefully. Um, whereas I've had the other characters, uh, or the same guys, roll up random slaves and gladiators, uh, and these are the gladiators that may be part of their, uh, uh, their gladiatorial stable. Who knows? Or maybe not. Maybe they'll die along the road of sorrow, uh, and you'll have to make up, uh, new ones. Blasphemy. Yeah. So, there are two days before the grand spectacle. Um, Ashoka, uh, Magnus, and Phineas, uh, um, are... Basically, the young masters of the gladiatorial stable, the Crimson, uh, the Crimson Sands, or the Conclave of Crimson Sands, and um, they found out that, um, unbeknownst to them, um, they've been signed up for this this horrible death match. Uh, the Imperial Prince is turning seven. This will be the first games that he presides over. And this is a big deal in the city. Like, like everything is a buzz about these games. This grand spectacle is kind of like the conclusion, like one of one of the the, the big main events that they're going to use I, to I, um, uh, please. I just want to point out that our prince. stable master not only signed up all of his gladiators for this fight, but also bet heavily on them to win. Like it's not just he's going to lose a bunch of materials; he's also like in debt with bets to win this like bad decision making times a thousand like... <laughs> <laughs> alright so Ashoka, Ashoka is wondering what he got himself into here uh, he was assigned uh... <laughs> um... ah, so what, what are we gonna do says, says Magnus I'm not sure if there's anything that we can do says Phineas you're the crafter, right? Of course I am. Who can make this sort of weapon? 
Well, Imperials are quite good with gunpowder, and gunpowder does involve uh, combustion. He's looking at you, like, hoping that you understand the words he's using. <laughs> combustion means boom, yes? Yes, um, flammability. I suppose this might be... This is definitely an older technology. Um, alchemist fire is not beyond the um, uh, the skills of even a um, neophyte alchemist. The sheer quantities, if you're going to be squirting it out of some sort of siege engine, yes, there will be problems, as alchemist fire tends to combust upon um, at least the liquid from which it stems. It's, a, it's an irony that fire does come from a liquid, but uh, he looks at you to make sure is that you're, you're still paying attention. Magnus is picking he his nods. nose. <laughs> Magnus is like scratching under his armor and like not, <laughs> is completely not paying attention to Phineas, which seems to relieve Phineas. If I recall, he's afraid of, of big, strong people. Be a Phineas, <laughs> Phineas would like step away <laughs> <laughs> Arnold <yeah. laughs> uh, Magnus is, Bar is Abed's master <laughs> Quinta, Kenny how's it going uh, so yeah oh, let's just stick Grandmaster Braun off to the side <laughs> uh, key rop and stone ready <laughs> uh, let, let me uh, let me just check Phineas's uh Marcus described Phineas as arrogant and self-important, but when push comes to shove, his cowardice comes to the fore. <laughs> okay. He, he's 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 not sure about the Snake Man, and he's afraid of Magnus. So he's he, he's he's acting in a certain way uh, around you, Ashoka. You can give me a sense motive if you want. Uh, I will take my sense motive. Why do you lie to me? Phineas has no ranks in bluff and has a crystal. Not field. great. Twelve. All right. If he takes ten, he gets a twelve. So yeah, you you get that you you get that he's unnerved by the both of you. Concentrate, Phineas. <laughs> yes. Um, it would require focus on the problems. It would require a alchemist of great skill. And also knowledge of siege weapons to construct such a thing. The whole elaborate construct would not be something that a mere um, neophyte could uh, could do. Well, unless you just wanted the whole thing to explode. Do we want the whole thing to explode? Yes, we want the whole thing to explode. The reason why he's unnerved because he doesn't find your fashion sense agreeable. Oh my goodness, greens with 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 those eyes or that skin tone. Uh, what's wrong with my hot pink tank top? <laughs> cut Tanks off to, haven't even been invented yet. Cut off to 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 show your uh, belly buttonless uh, uh, chest. Did Nagaji did Nagaji have? Umbilical cords? Weird. They'd come from eggs, wouldn't they? I don't know. Depends how warm-blooded they are. Because they're not. Yeah. The mid-drift. <laughs> the whole thing must explode! We must have pyrotechnics for the crowd! <laughs> oh, very much so. The only way we, we, we survive this is blow up their ship. It's the only way we can do it. At least in my head. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> what are you doing? We could probably find out which alchemist is working on this. Yes, I'd like to get your keen eyes a view of it. We're also going to need something to trigger an explosion to equip our men with. And our large friend over there is going to have to show our people how to use the weapon. I assume this alchemist fire would suffice for chaining an explosion. 
So we're going to sabotage the device, he says. Not if we can avoid it. Preferably, we'd like it to be on the up and up, but it would be good to know where our men should throw the alchemist fire. If it is constructed sufficiently that it cannot be successfully sabotaged, then, well... Well, I don't think that they would have the liquid exposed. It would likely be in some sort of tank. <laughs> if I could see the schematics for such a thing, he says. Hmm. Schematics. I'm not sure what you're getting at, Brad, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're abusing animals where? What, what, what happened? <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> confused as well. <laughs> uh, but welcome. Oh, welcome. <laughs> uh, welcome to the circus. Uh, <clears throat> Ahmed is, has just came back from the living. He is having an event at his house. He'll be here in a bit. Okay. Um, schematics. I just picture children hanging from ceilings, like riding, <laughs> riding fans, and <laughs> like like uh, like a children's I, I birthday party. I and... chasing one kid with like <laughs> one kid hooked onto each leg, and another one onto his back, trying to choke him out. Ah, <laughs> dragon lives matter. I get it now. <laughs> okay, die, dragon, die. Got it. We've been doing this for about a year, so we're we, it kind of went over our heads. Uh, it, it, it's a it's a thing that's deep in our minds at this point. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Touche, Brad. Touche. <laughs> uh, but this dragon is definitely alive. Dragons oh. are sentient, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor Ahmed. <laughs> poor Ahmed. Uh, all right, schematics. Now... Are you familiar with the local crafters in town capable of this sort of thing, or should I be going to someone else for that information? He, he, let's look at his skills. He makes stuff. And he's, and he's a imperial trained, um, alchemist, so... He also knows stuff. Holy yeah. crap, does he know stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna make him roll a... Let's see local or nobility knowledge or arcana. arcana to know who like a friendly alchemist would be to the whole uh imperial arena they might actually have one under their employ yeah give me a yeah. d20 add 16 all right how is he adding his in moderate fire twice because he's a cognitivist same thing fire is oh okay cognitist uh, or whatever it's called he rolls yeah a one, so, he, so he adds his he rolls a one he gets a 17 uh, okay. Um, well, the Conjurium, um, the Order of Conjurers does, they do have alchemists as well that work for them. What materials are used to create the fire? Is there anything special that goes into the formulation? They're going to need a loft of it. Well, no different than any old alchemist fire. He actually produces... Uh... Thanks for the follow, Brad. Um, he produces an alchemist uh, pot. <laughs> Careful. You don't want to burn yourself. I wouldn't want to burn myself. Fire is very painful. He's lying. He's resistant to fire. <laughs> um. He, it is a combination of sulfur, naphtha, and quicklime. Are any of those particularly rare? He, define rare. If somebody needed to make I don't know, 100 gallons of this stuff. <laughs> Would not be able to source it. The Empire is quite large and rich. We're in the Imperial City. The Alchemists would have enough. Hmm. It is not like they're fighting a war. They're fighting a single battle. And a Mach 1 at that. You also 
told us that they were going to wipe the, the decks with oil to make everything flammable. Yes. We will need something to counter that as well. You would take equal parts of sulfur, rock, salt, ashes, thunderstone, and pyrite, pound it into a fine black mortar. You would do it in a dry place, preferably in the mid-sun day of a summer day. Equal amounts of... Um, yeah. He just starts prattling on how you'd make it. There seems to be a lot of ingredients and a lot of... Uh, So, all right, I will find a schematic. Siphons would be made of bronze. <laughs> Magnus. Oh. Magnus, over here. <laughs> what is it? Have you taught your men to throw? Yeah, throwing is a good way to, to do skirmish. You open up Fire. with good skirmish, but... Uh, How yeah. many... vile or vile equivalents do we have? Coconuts or something? What are you thinking, says Phineas? <clears throat> well, if we're going to need someone to hit something precisely, we need to figure out who can actually do that, and coconut full of water or something might be something to practice with, at least. Yeah, I could do that. There was only two days, though. There's not much you could teach a man in two days. We still need to know who's the best at it. I uh, would be Reg. <laughs> this is Magnus. He already knows. <laughs> <laughs> nah, if I was in there, I'd, I'd be the best, but <laughs> it's Rich. <laughs> Rich is good thrower. All right. I suppose that solves that mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Ashoka, you're running the show. You're the brains of this operation. Apparently. <laughs> Off we go. Do you, um, do you want to... Um, is it sabotage that you're looking for? Oh, well, we just smash it before they could use it. But that would not result in explosions. No, no, no. We need there to be an explosion. I would not mind... Uh, Coconut's not a bad idea. If the opportunity presents itself to sabotage, I would most definitely like it sabotaged. Yes, let's get some sort of thick container. Something that it would take some time for the fire to burn through. And then if there was something very combustible on the inside, not just alchemist fire, but something explosive. Gunpowder. Coconuts filled with gunpowder. It would take a bit of time for the coconut to burn, but... Yes. Let's see. If Adam is can... going, fuck yeah, coconuts! Uh, but Ashoka's not, like, he doesn't have those sorts of emotions. <laughs> like, yeah, <coconuts." laughs> if we can get some containers made out of hard wood, fill them, fill them with gunpowder, and place them inside of the siphon prior to the battle, it will still be able to fire, but eventually the gunpowder would ignite, explode. Perfect. Probably also exploding. Mm, how do we make sure that... Another way of making it explode, it would be to find out where the tanks are being stored and have the explosion happen there. I imagine they wouldn't have the tanks above deck. They would have them below deck. But by the time you get below deck in the middle of a fight, you've already taken the ship, says Magnus. I, I should know. I was on ships before.
just turn them upside down and just start pouring it in. Uh, uh, I believe the gun itself will be more visible, and we need the explosion to happen somewhere where it can be witnessed by all. Oh, if you had a keg of gunpowder explode next to the canisters, there would be an ex- a grand explosion. Ah, I saw it once. It was a uh, small galise, says Magnus. It was carrying a lot of gunpowder, and then it went boom. Mm. He's, was he's, it magnificent? He's, he's just staring off. All right, then. Storage tanks or main gun. Storage tanks might be a little less secure. Easier to find, though. Easier to conceal, easier to craft. We need to get someone to sneak in to light the fuse, says Phineas. Bah. Do you you have anyone who's sneaky? No, we're we're gladiators. Don't sneak around. Like a snake. He seems pleased with himself with the uh, with a racist comment towards the Nagaji. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> nah. uh, perhaps you need a sneaky snake amongst your number in the future when you when we find a sneaky snake. Try to preserve them. Snakes have their useful. Their ha- snakes have their uses. What about your bird? My what? I saw you had a bird in your in your room. You've been keeping it kind of quiet. It's a raven. It is my familiar, says Phineas. Yeah, your your bird could sneak in. The birds all over the place. I'm not going to make my. Uh, Ashoka is now looking at Phineas with this like. Hmm. <laughs> I, I'm not going to have my familiar fly into a a ship full of warriors simply so that it could light a fuse and blow up. That is not what familiars are for. <laughs> we, can make the fu- we can make the fuse longer. <laughs> let's let's see what Magnus is. Diplomacy check is. Is if he angers Phineas. <laughs> oh look, he didn't spend any ranks in diplomacy, and his Christmas ten. <laughs> Phineas seems seems to be in shock and aghast at that. At that. Uh... <laughs> well, if it's not going to be around, what good is it just hiding out in your bedchambers? Why are you in my bedchambers? I was looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a terrible idea. He looks like he's like you're both kind of looking at him, giving him pressure. He feels like he's under pressure. He he turns around, he leans on a leans on a table and thinks for a moment. If we're going to do this insanity, what protections can be placed upon Did Mark even name his familiar? Ratfink. <laughs> Pestilence. Uh, George. We need a good. Na- I'm gonna let the the stream name the <laughs> the the. Uh, I may be asking for something. <laughs> I may regret it. Uh, <laughs> what is a good familiar name for a Raven familiar? This is for Phineas Garrett. For Phineas Garrett. Yep. Because uh, it does not look like... I think Mark only wrote down Arcane Bond, Raven Familiar, C Raven, and he has not created the Raven Familiar. So. Mm-hmm. Phineas does have a bit of a sort of an emo sort of look to him. <laughs> he does. <laughs> He's a crafter. Uh, his, his story oh. is that uh, Phineas is born to a, a family of well-off mercantile um, family in the metropolitan city or the capital city. Even as a child, he was a gifted, a gifted academic with an inherent curiosity. Um, basically, if I'm gonna summarize this, he wanted to become um, like a wizard. Um, his parents ended up paying for 
uh, his Imperial College training as a wizard and alchemist. It is also when he found his love for uh, for a particular substance. I think he's a- addicted to drugs and ended up spending a lot of his parents' money on so on the drugs? raven for the drug addicted wizard. I really like Poe. I think Poe is an excellent name for the drug addicted wizard who has a raven. I really like Nyx too. So uh, uh, <laughs> I think Poe is a little too on the nose. Um, uh, but you Nyx, never I'm pee good. enough on the nose. <laughs> it's right, <Edgar>. girl. <laughs> Brad left 360 is like Brad <laughs> the Raven. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Nick's, I, I, I need, we're, we'll call it Nick's. Um, all right. And we need a token for the Raven familiar. Let's see if we can find a good picture. Like some crazy squawking Raven. If we knew an animal handler, we could use an alternate delivery system. Your bird's smart, right? I heard it say something. Yes, it knows a few words. This is Phineas Lou is looking really, really stressed. <laughs> we should probably get your... Let's see that we can get this working first. Okay, that raven looks like a little shit, so we'll do you... <laughs> Look in his eyes. <laughs> it's a smart bird looking over his shoulder. I'll, I'll, I'll share that in a second. So I guess you guys relocate to Phineas's bedchambers <laughs> to go um, to go look at Nick's. Save token, Nick's. How strong is he? Why? Oh, poor Nix. Well, if you can create a keg is something that we could get snuck on board, potentially. Nix there, if he was strong enough, could carry something sufficient in with him. Oops, I think ravens are like strength two or something. Yeah. Here. Well, there's one way to, t- to try it out. Let me go get my weights. <laughs> and Magnus goes and gets some heavy things. <laughs> All right, so strength too tiny. Uh, right, this is... First level familiar is int six. Carry stuff. And I think raven familiars can actually know words. Oh, like they can speak? Give me a second. They speak. They can use command words. Okay, so, uh, which load for flight? Uh, like the old 3.5 rule was you had to be in light load, but that was also not like an actual thing. Yeah, that, that you could go up to your heavy load in flight, that's fine. Okay, so we have to find the, uh, uh, Ah, I have to, you know what? I'm going to use my own sheet for this because my strength and load sheet is better than their. They've changed the web page and it's now across three different things. It's annoying. Speaks one language of its master's choice as a supernatural ability. So not in the anti magic zone. So, uh, so basically, you go into the the bed chamber. It's basically part lab, part uh, um, uh, scrivener's uh, uh, room, and there's a small cot off to the side, and there's this elaborate cage that is open, and you can see that um, the raven isn't in the cage, but he's 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 up he's up in sort of the rafters of the room. Um, uh, what what would the raven taunt Phineas with? Nick a boop, Nick a boop. <laughs> Phineas just stops for a moment. His head goes down slightly as there may be a reason why he's sequestered the raven. <laughs> <laughs> 
Maybe he doesn't care if it gets blown up. <laughs> Phineas goes into his room and pretends to be moving things around. He actually is clearing off a space. Uh, dumbbell! Sh- dumbbell! Uh, who's he, who's he talking pounds. to me? I assuredly know. Snake! 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 Greetings. Everyone, He's this giving, is, giving me a little bit of intense look. This is this is Nix. Nix is my name. Don't worry about. Uh, so it's <laughs> my name. Don't worry about. He's quite smart for a bird. <laughs> Dummy. I never went through the... Uh, hmm. What's he lang- what language is he speaking? He's speaking Imperial Common. Does Phineas speak Nikaji? Phineas does not speak Nikaji, I don't think so. <laughs> good look. I think he speaks... How uh, many languages do you speak? He speaks Imperial he Common? He does speak High Imperial. High Imperial, yeah. All right, uh... In in High Imperial, are you sure you don't want to blow him up? <laughs> He's been with me for some time. <laughs> he, he's like, why would I want to blow up my familiar? He gives you a look like he didn't consider this before. <laughs> uh, so he can fly the get the gunpowder in because the gunpowder weighs five pounds, and he can carry ten pounds. <laughs> hey, bird. Nix. Bird. Nix. I said bird. Nix. Nix my name, don't worry about. This is not going to go well. Are we sure we can't eat him? No, ah. no, we cannot ah. eat him. Ah. It's now like calling at, <laughs> at Magnus. <sighs> Down here, <sighs> Nix. And you notice that, that Phineas holds out his arm and Nix actually listens to his master and, and lands on his arm. I'll poop on you. Sister Magnus. I better not get any bird shit on me. <laughs> if any birds shit on me. <laughs> it's like now hiding behind Phineas's head, who is not a very good guard against the angry Magnus. He backs away from Magnus a little bit. Uh, are you... Alright. This will work. Snake man, snake man, stupid. Mm. Ninkapoop. Yes, they're all nincompoops. Now, says Phineas, we're going to see if you're quite capable of flying with a heavy thing. We need a task done of you. Task, task, no task. Feet. <laughs> Phineas goes over to a bowl that the bird could quite easily feed himself from and gives him a little bit of a little bit of food F- Phineas <laughs> it numbs it all up you sometimes have to put your foot down to be a master you know enforce your will he straightens up like you're about to insult him <laughs> back stiffens this is, what, this is the response we wanted now <laughs> Magnus, do you know uh, something about five pounds? Yeah, he, he's got this bag and he pulls out this big, like, weight with a, like a big like, lead weight with a, a, a loop at the end of it. <clears throat> yeah, this is what I exercise with my fingers. Nix. Nix, my Phineas, name, no could you ask Nix to pick up the weight? It's, um... Countdown to goodness. We're all set to restart. Uh, pick a time. Don't restart now. Pick a time. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Never. <laughs> right. God damn Windows. <laughs> we got, I've got everything open. Like, come on, Windows. Come on, Microsoft. <laughs> that is the coolest bleed purple. That's so cool. 
<laughs> Why? Because we want you to see if you can do it. I can do anything. He lands down. He he struggles with it, but he's it's able to pick up load. Yeah, it's he's less able to medium load. He he flies it to he flies it. He flies above Magnus and drops it on him. <laughs> 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 it's Magnus in the shoulder doing uh, one damage. Paper <laughs> shit, <laughs> paper shit. It lands over on Phineas. Magnus is like actually got his fist cocked. <clears throat> Phineas. Snake. Can you create a bomb? What do you mean, create a bomb? Well, a small keg of gunpowder weighs no more than that weight. Yeah, I do not have the permits to create gunpowder. Gunpowder is a regulated substance. All right. So we need gunpowder. Yes. Yeah, you know he's got lots of gunpowder. The soldiers that were walking around. Yes. We just need to forget one before they return their arms. Yeah, but these are no flat-foot city guard. Imperial soldiers are the ones with the gunpowder. This is... This could land us all in the arena, is what he says. Not, not like we're involved in the arena now. I mean, like, in the arena. That wouldn't be so bad. Magnus. Magnus would come again. Magnus, Ninkaboot. <laughs> He's cheesing right. the bird. The bird's hiding behind <laughs> Phineas. And Phineas is kind of shirking away. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of those, Magnus, please don't kill the bird. Kill the <laughs> right, bird. right. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 put, he, puts his, he puts his weights away. <laughs> He's your familiar, yes? Uh, Phineas nods. Would he be able to sabotage the tanks with something smaller? The tanks will be made out of bronze as well. There needs to be explosion that can pierce them. The explosion will appear to the uneducated eye as a perhaps malfunction of the device itself. No, I th want. Now, how do we get a bird flying an obvious keg of gunpowder into the into the mess. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen for minor magics how much emphasis is placed in the arena. What do you mean? If you were invisible, as an example. Well, that would do. I can cast invisibility. He's a third level wizard. Let me see his spell book. He's got invisibility and mirror image prepared today. And it's the only two spells he has in his spell book. He <laughs> is like Ashoka where we are like, go get him, Magnus. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Defensive spell, don't hit me. <laughs> Expeditious retreat, protection from good, run away. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Nix won't get caught carrying a bomb if he is the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I believe that if we cast it upon him while he is carrying that keg. Keg, okay, okay. um, He will have three minutes of invisibility. Ah, there's lots of carrion birds that know that, that there's good... That there's good pickings. There are lots of ravens in the city. You've noticed, mm -hmm. you've noticed ravens and crows all over the place. Yep. <clears throat> Knowledge, right. local. Um, sure. If we're talking about ravens. Yes. Knowledge, if you, local. If you actually have it. Fourteen. Um, the leader of House Sildra is known as the Queen of Ravens. 
We're not going up against her, specifically. <laughs> you Good. don't know which other gladiatorial houses are manning boats, although Magnus does suggest that, or I did suggest that, uh, the Hilt might be involved, because the yep. Hilt have a maritime background. Yes. In fact, they might be... Be, they might be the ones being set They're up. Gonna to be, win. We're going to blow the hilt up. <clears throat> They're going to be so pissed at us. Perfect. All right. So we fly bird in. It explodes. Yes. <laughs> the bird's like. <laughs> bird flies out before it explodes. How will he light the fuse? Tinder twig. Okay. So it's a creature, it's got claws, <laughs> it's smart, and you just basically need to strike the match. I think he can do it. Well, maybe we should practice that. <laughs> Ashoka just had this flash of, like, the arsonist nincompoop bird just lighting shit on fire thinking it's hilarious um I just checked to see if uh if Phineas took use magic ranks use magic device ranks he didn't um it's something he should consider doing yes because those ranks would then go to his bird so you could actually have a bird flying around with a wand in its hands uh, yes you... shot the command word Bow! right <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to suggest that to Mark. Uh, yes. I'll, I'll make a little note on the character sheet. Mm -hmm. um, All right, Magnus. Consider taking ranks in use magic device. These, this would mean that familiar could potentially use a wand. Because it can speak. <clears throat> I can't wait for the 80s training montage showing Nick's how to light a match. <laughs> montage! Montage! montage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so there's this, <laughs> this is amusing, this is amusing several hours that you spend in the hallway <laughs> trying to get the bird to light matches and to light like little, <laughs> to light little, uh, uh, um, piles of hay and to like light a fuse eventually and and we'll say it takes uh, <laughs> uh it takes four hours to get the bird so that it, it's doing it about 50 percent of the time Magus, eventually the bird has it the arena that's oh, big why how long will it take nicks to fly across it love uh, I don't know. Not that long. Depends if you get close enough. Can an archer fire an arrow from one end to the other? Yeah. Okay. The arena itself, yeah. Uh, one end of the stands, the other? Mm, no. You might want to find a potion of strength to speed up the bird. If I had the time and the spell formula, I could make my own potion, says Phineas. Uh, does Phineas know Ant Hall? Phineas does not know Ant Hall. See, Ant Hall is another way for him to be able to do the thing in his light load. Ant Hall and would be a less expensive spell to buy. It's way the tits cheaper. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Uh... All right, so he did take infusion too, so he could do it as a alchemist if he had the spell. All right, let's. So basically, there's two days before the event. You're in. <laughs> so we, I need a scroll of Ant Hall. You've used the morning and the afternoon to train to figure out what the plan was and to train the bird to light a match yes. to light a fuse specifically this um, is going to we're investing the minimum amount of cash into this 
Except for Phineas, who's investing, is familiar to this plan, but don't worry about that. I got a good bluff check. It's fine. I'm very invested. I'm very worried about this plan succeeding. <laughs> and if it works, awesome. If it doesn't work, eh. <laughs> All right, we need to find a way to get gunpowder is the next. So we need to find gunpowder, and we need to get a scroll of Ant Hall. Okay. Um... Those are the, that's the next two things. So uh, the scroll of Ant Hall, um, you should be able to. Uh, Phineas says that he could spend the time buying the uh, uh, the scroll. Perfect. College budget crime one hundred and one. Uh, <laughs> he does not have enough money to do so, though. So where is this money coming from? Uh, um, I don't know if any of us. Uh, I guess he's he's actually broke. Broke. I uh, I've got a hundred gold pieces. Okay, um, a scroll would be minimal, uh, and he does have fifty gold pieces worth of magic ink, so he could ink it into his his spell book. Okay. I do I do know of some merchants around town. It may take me some time to find the spell, but once I do, uh, there is a small issue of money, is what he says. I Snort it all! Snort it all! <laughs> what was that about a doll? Oh. All of it? Hmm. Phineas is pretending to clean up and ignoring the comment that Nick's made. Make a boop. Okay. I'm gonna put out the money for a first circle scroll. <laughs> okay. Which is, I believe... 25 gold, I think. 25 gold? Maybe. Okay. He's for a potion. <clears throat> Come along. <laughs> Training montage to teach Nix how to steal a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> really? Come along, Nix. He's not leaving Nix alone with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's got a backpack that Nix flies into and kind of, it's like a familiar backpack. Um, awesome. Uh, yep. Yeah. Sticks his head out. Stupid snake. Ashoka is so disconnected. The sort of like stupid snake thing, it does not it in no way, shape, or form negatively impacts his emotional state. Like, it, there's no... Uh, how are we gonna get gunpowder? We're gonna go fight some Imperial soldiers, or what? Like, Magnus, you realize, would fight Imperial soldiers? Magnus is a bit unhinged. We would prefer not to fight Imperial soldiers. Wah. He looks, he looks uh, disappointed. No. He's actually grumpy. Any... He's actually pouty right now. Is, is, there any... <laughs> is there any construction going on? <clears throat> oh, no. The uh, buildings being demolished. We saw them diverting the uh, the aqueduct. It's a big city. There's like a million people here. There's actually several million, if not more. But he got the he got the number of zeros right. Yep. Those Mag Magnus ain't no dummy. Ten. <laughs> can use the word million. <laughs> Copycatting somebody else, but he can use the word. All right. Gunpowder. 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 Guards have gunpowder, but that would most definitely be a last resort. Who else has gunpowder? Ships. Yeah. Imperial City uh, does have a port. Slightly a, a bit out of town, though. Like, kind of like... I think it's a separate town. Just down the road. Like a half mile down the road. Okay. If we're going to take it, it wouldn't be Imperial Guards. Uh, noble families that have private guards that have guns, or noble families that have guns. Uh, yeah, Minor shitty ones. <clears throat> <laughs> Give me a knowledge nobility. 
Alright. God damn it! Six! Um, it's not just noble families, it's imperial families that have guns. Okay. Crap. Uh, so it's like the upper echelon of nobility. The, yeah, it's the, no, just... the nobles from this conquered world, uh, the ones that capitulated and kind of like like threw in with the uh, with the Imperium, um, they probably don't have permits for guns. The last people you want are the grumpy nobles that are that don't like being taxed or don't like you know Imperial ways to be able to form their own re rebellions. Black market alchemist. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Do you have any sort of criminal skills or things that you could? Well, I, yeah, in terms of skills, uh, like sleight of hand, stealth, bluff, all those skills. Okay. Yeah, um, like I guess knowledge local would be the role to see if you know where you would go to buy black market goods. Knowledge <clears throat> local, yep, that is one that I have. Fourteen, charm. Hey, yeah, you, I got charms. You know where you would start asking, but you're not. Um, you're not sure who to, like. You don't know. A, you don't have a guy. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay, I will do a. I will go do a diplomacy check to, to gather information. Okay. To go. What, what I need is weed. <laughs> Can you give me the hookup with? The... Okay. Um, we'll call it the Vespers Market. It's the market that when the sun goes down, that market comes out. So okay. I'll just... Uh, and the Vespers market is where, not necessarily illegal goods, but it would be more... Um, where more risque goods are offered. Karma Sutras everywhere. <laughs> Things that that in the light of day, the Five Faced God and the stuffy Imperials would not like, but not so bad as, um, uh, as outright illegal. Certain types okay. of poisons, for example, like poisons are used to like control rat, you know, problems mm -hmm. and uh, to put down animals and that sort of thing. Perfect. Hey, Peta. Uh, all right, so uh, yeah, you go to the Vespers <laughs> Market. Um, okay. Let me just write down because we're kind of creating the campaign world as we go. I'm going to go to uh, the Gazetteer and in Vinvosa, Metropolis, Vespers Market. Okay, you um, you catch a uh, you catch wind of a uh, one of the town criers. Um, uh, effectively giving the uh, proclamations for the town. You only catch a bit of it as, as you're leaving. And for those who wish it, offerings to the prince to glorify his seventh year are being taken at the chapels and priest uh, and the chapels and churches of the five faced god charity is piousness and piousness is a path to righteousness All right so there was a a call to um a call to the goodly citizens of the empire to uh, tithe, basically. Well, see, I'm not a goodly citizen, so yeah, nah. Well, <laughs> um, you leave um, basically this the stables, uh, the the house of the masters, um, and then where the where the offices and uh, the uh, sleeping arrangements and living quarters are, of the masters are. And you head to the uh, you head to the the market of vespers. You can see that mm -hmm. there are many painted whores of the night um, that that are that seem to get Magnus's attention. Um, there are uh, there's somebody there's somebody um, selling dragon fruit, apparently 
they're very expensive, and you can see someone trying to haggle for a single dragon fruit. How, like, what? What's the order of magnitude that they're haggling around? Um, like a like over.